30 competitors entered. Five weeks of competition. Eight remain. This is the Born to be Wild listener series. And I'm going to the playoffs, baby! Hi, hello, welcome to week six of the Born to be Wild listener series. It's playoff week, baby. The deck building challenge for this week's video is simple. It's spell it out week. What's that mean? It means that each deck has a different restriction on what spells you can and cannot run in them. Deck one must contain at least 10 spells and can only run spells that cost zero to two mana. Deck two must contain only spells that cost two to four mana and must also run 10 spells. Deck three is only required eight spells but can only run spells that cost 4 to 7 mana. And the fourth deck is only required 6 spells, but must only contain spells that cost 7 to 10 mana. My opponent this week is none other than Martian Boo, so we should have some good games ahead of us. And without further ado, let's get into the decks. Most decks in Wild Hearthstone only want to run spells that cost between 0 and 2 mana anyway. And so for each of our cases, me and Martian Boo both decided to bring a Broken Warlock deck as our deck one. I brought Dark Glare, minus two Backfires, plus two Happy Ghouls, and Martian brought Reno Lock without Backfire or Dark Skies and just everything else you could ever want. Both of our Warlock decks got banned. Our deck twos that can only run spells between two and four mana. I have brought a Beast Hunter with Don't Feed the Animals, Martian, but another Reno deck, this time being a Reno Priest. But because it can only run spells between 2 and 4 mana, it does not have Mass Hysteria or Psychic Scream. For my deck 3, I brought a Control Shaman with every board clear under the sun. Notably, Reno and Zephyrs the Great were banned in decks 3 and 4, so I've gone with a duplicate Control Shaman instead of a Reno one. For Martian's deck 3, he has gone with 4 through 7 mana. He decided to just run a bunch of 4 cost spells that are really good in Paladin. For my deck 4, I have taken Pirate Warrior, I have taken 6 cards out, and I have put 6 really expensive spells in. But Crush can sometimes cost only 3 mana, which is kind of cute. Martian's deck 4, he has brought a Galakron Shaman with a really expensive Earthquake, Tidal Wave, and Eye of the Storm top end. Let's check out the games. Rexa versus Anduin. All right. We have game one here. I have brought my Beast Hunter, which is my deck two of two to four mana spells. And Martian has brought his Raza Priest, which has two to four mana spells. This matchup should be favorable for me, especially with a Starving Buzzard and Don't Feed the Animals in my Mulligan. But Raza Priest is capable of some pretty powerful things. It's a little unfortunate he has Northshire Cleric early. It's gonna make my Buzzard turn really awkward if I don't kill it first. Uh, so this turn on three, I was probably supposed to kill Commander so that next turn I could draw cards. In my testing of this deck and like learning how to play it, I learned that it's usually right to do the things you have even if they suck. Because you're gonna draw cards that make your plays next turn like that card, like you're gonna draw a Master's Call or a 1-1 that spawns a 1-1. And so from those practice games, I should have known to kill Commander on turn three so that if I drew a good card on turn four, I could play it. Here, I didn't kill Command on turn 3, still played my cards on turn 4 because it drew 5 cards, but now he's going to be able to draw a card off of his girl and kill my buzzard, and I don't really like either of those things. Here I was worried about a Spirit Lash. If he played Spirit Lash, I would have drawn 2 cards, which would have overdrawn. Uh, so I burned my coin, but in hindsight after he did this play, maybe I didn't care about those cards, maybe I just would rather have the coin. Here it's kind of tough. I knew I had to play a 3 mana spell. Maybe I was, I was probably supposed to just kill command again. <laughs> but I was able to play uh, some uh, some dogs and a timber wolf to clear his board here and send a couple face. So it's, it's not the worst play ever. Unfortunately I didn't draw one. I was hoping for a one. So far I've had kind of an awkward turn 3 where I was probably supposed to kill the Northshire so I got a little punished for it. And he's done a really good job to stay at a healthy life total. 
But if I can get these good, don't feed the animals in. We should be fine. Here I do burn a card. So if I had kept the coin, I would have burned two cards. But at the same time, a coin's really good, so it's it's tough. I probably wasn't supposed to draw. Or like, you know, I was supposed to use kill command so that I had one less card. Here I nailed the poison like an absolute madman. Super good. This is the first turn that I felt like was actually just good. I would have loved to have buffed more minions with my uh, Don't Feed the Animals, but unfortunately I've drawn all spells this game. Which is a little tragic. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we've, we've got some big rhinos in hand. They both are buffed with Don't Feed the Animals, and they're going to be double buffed. Here and I've gotten cards out of hand, I can play my other Don't Feed. However, before I play it, I realized, you know what, I can get one more draw out of this. I can kill command this turn. Everybody look away from your screens right now. For some reason, I was so traumatized by not kill commanding the Northshire Cleric that I decided to kill this normal bog standard 1-3. I don't know if I was like scared of Reno or what, but that was almost certainly not correct. Here he has Reno on 8, the Razan 5, Reno on 8. I'm pretty worried of just being dead next turn. So I choose to play my buffed Rhino and my buffed Timberwolf and my buffed Snow Flipper Penguin. As well as the two mana to buff them. And uh, this line hits him all the way down to three health. So this way he can't play any of his pink shenanigans that also hurt himself. But the problem with this line is that because I didn't don't feed last turn, I can't play this buzzer to kill him, which is a little bit unfortunate. Uh, here he has Reno Jackson, essentially, and a full clear, which is really brutal. Because the only way I lost was to both of those things. And because he had the Death Knight on 8, he's starting to really poke me down here. He's actually made quite a bit of, big, a, bit of a board now. So this turn's a little tough. I am 1 mana off of 10 damage. Or 1 turn, however you want to look at it. So this coin not being in my hand now comes back to bite me. I would have lethal this turn if I had the coin. Because Rhino, Buzzard, Kill Command is lethal. Unfortunately, I can't play that, and even if I go buzzard into Rhino and draw once, I don't have lethal. So I chose to go with a line that kind of cleared his board and set up for next turn's kill. The problem is, is that now I'm just going to die to his pink shenanigans. So I was probably supposed to go buzzard into Rhino and just hope he didn't have Reno Jackson. Uh, but this game was almost certainly not piloted well by me, and unfortunately his spawn of shadows, aka his pink shenanigans, will take me down here. He'll be at one, even if he didn't have his penance, he would live. So, this game is like a mix of unfortunate and maybe a, a few missed timings of some of the plays. I lost my coin, which I needed obviously to kill him this turn. I probably should have kill commanded to prevent him from drawing cards who couldn't have Spawn of Shadows here, as well as Raza on 5 and Anduin on 8. But it is what it is. On to game 2. Morgul versus Ragnaros! Game 2! My Shaman, my deck 3, which is 4 through 7 cost spells, he's playing his Shaman, 7 through 10 cost spells. His deck has 7 through 10 cost spells, it has things like Breeze to Lycan, Shutterwalk, it's a really slow Gather Crown Shaman essentially. Uh, but he decides to just have the Ubernus here and have both of his 1 drops, the only 1 drops he runs, <laughs> as his uh, as his other game, it's just killing 1 drops. He has the one twos that are like free essentially, but those don't kill me. One into two into three scaling one drops and wind fury minion. That's what kills me. So my uh, control shaman with a bunch of AOE is currently getting smorked down by his fairly top end heavy Galakron shaman, and this is getting a little ridiculous. This curve is insane. He runs like one three drop, I think, and like. One one drop and gets scaling one drop into scaling one drop into the best three into the best four. Here I think I threw the game. I was probably supposed to hex the six two, but I ended up playing my Knall Slogger. But the problem is now I can't hack the scheme on this turn. So I was supposed to hex last turn so I can clear this turn. I think I win if I take that line. Unfortunately, I threw and I took this line. Uh, and so now I'm staring down 9 and 4 damage kills me. Which is of course Cage Master Custodian precisely exactly. Does exactly enough damage to kill me. Which is tragic. 
And uh, I have died on turn six to his top end heavy slow Galakrond Shaman deck. I mean, that's just, that was brutal. I really thought I'd win that game. He is uh, curving out well again, one into two. Uh, he only runs one wand up in this deck as well, just the Righteous Protectors. One into two into three is a bit rough. Don't like this down 0-2. When you're down 0-2, you don't want to see one into two into three. You certainly don't want to see one into two into three into good trade into four cult arms that revives the spell burst and gives him a full board. You really don't want to see that. <laughs> so after he went scaling one into scaling one into wind fury three into rush elemental four all will out brew his ones he's now this game followed it up with one into two into three into four thankfully this turn i can play my five mana aoe though and i escape out fine it's been a long time since i've played a volcano baby you love to see it oh call times on five that's a bit rough Hey, at least the Knife Juggler went last, though. And I tap deck this, you know, Dirty Rat, which isn't all too bad. He's got a Mind Breaker. But a Mind Breaker would have been much less good on, on three. He makes his Mind Breaker real tall. I don't know if that was a correct play from Martian. He could have traded the 2 1 and the 2 1 to kill that Dirty Rat and then hit me for six. I mean, I. I don't know. Guess this is fine. Thankfully for me, I have the other volcano, and it exactly clears a second time. You love to see that. You absolutely love to see that. What in a two and a three into called arms into called arms into rally? Surely something spectacular. I'm gonna play my Earth Revenant and just kind of stall a little bit, setting up for this earthquake. He makes his second Mind Breaker really large. This time perfectly clears my taunt and sends his minion's face. Uh, but yeah, this is starting to get rough. I can't Earthshaker this, or Earthquake this, because I need to save my Earthquake that has like kind of two waves of AoE for after his McGurgle Primes. Because his Rally got him a 2-1 a Murloc, so he has two McGurgle Primes in this deck. Which is going to be real rough for me later, so I have to save the Earthquakes for that. Here I play Armor Vendor over Totem, because... What good is Toteming? Thankfully for me, he finally takes the turn off. And I can finally breathe a little. If he could just take the next few turns off, that would be ideal. He's got, like, nothing left. He can just draw only one minion at a time for the rest of the game. So we're doing just fine. Here I almost trade wrong. And then realize I'm probably going to kill this post. So let's save as much life on my minions as possible. And knock him down to only a 1-1. He's only played two Blessing of Kings, so leaving this 1-1 alive only gets punished by Blessing of Authority, which I don't really care about. What I do care about is him continuing the perfect curve with not only a McGurgle Prime, but a McGurgle Prime into a first minion Lushwater Scout, which gives this whole board Russian plus one attack. That's what you absolutely love to see right there. <laughs> I mean, that's just, that's just good stuff. <laughs> oh, man. This curve is just brutal, dude. It's, oh, it's so brutal. Uh, after a while, I was like, I can't Earthquake this. It just doesn't do anything. So I hex his, uh, his value generator. I thought about hexing the thing that gave him a 4-3 rush. Then I realized he'd draw a bunch of cards with that one, so I hexed that one. And I played my Talon, which will draw me a, a Nazoth, I believe. Thankfully, he's already lost two posts. We can't play a post and then make me draw it. And <laughs> have an unplayable Nazoth. That'd be tragic. Not that I have had any Death Rattle dies, like, other than Talon and... I think Talon's the only death battle I've had to die. <laughs> uh, he, he takes a turn off, kind of. He gets the knife juggler, which deals two, and he's got a full board. But uh, as long as I can clear this, I should be all right. And thankfully for me, I have a a fourth? Or is it a fifth? Either a fourth or a fifth AoE in my hand. This game has been crazy. He's had, I think, the best curve you can have, pretty much. Um, but thankfully I've had the answer every time. Absolutely beautiful 1-1 one -one here to contest one of those minions. He gets Nerubian Weblord, which is great for me. 
Another turn off. That could have been a McGurgle Prime. If he had McGurgle Prime top deck there, I think I lost, because he would have got the Lush Water Scout to give it all attack and stuff, and that'd have been gross. Here I actually do something kind of interesting. I played my AoE on like a pretty Weasley board, but it's really all I could do. And what's kind of cute about my deck is it's like I can only run spells that cost four to seven mana. I chose to run Murloc uh, Tasty Fin here, whatever it's called, instead of Ice Fishing, because it's kind of like Ice Fishing on a stick. But what it allows me to do is when I have a Poisonous Flurgle in play, I can play this third Murloc and it triggers the Flurgle Poison again. Which is always something you want to do when you play the Ice Fishing Murgurgle Toxin combo, but you'd never run a third Murloc. So I finally got to hopefully do that here. I'm like protecting it at all costs, just really hoping that when he draws his other Murgurgle Prime, I'll have this alive. Although I'd prefer he just didn't draw the Murgurgle Prime, that would be ideal. Here I. You know, I don't want to play these 10s because there's like really nothing in them. And I don't want to play this 4 because it's a good AoE. So I, uh, I trade down to protect this 2-2 again so that <laughs> somehow if it lives when he plays McGurgle Prime, I can get at least the 1 damage AoE to his Divine Shields. He draws it, which is quite gross. He hits another Rush. I don't, like, if I did not roll that Taunt Totem, that Rush hits my Toxman and I lose the game. I would have lost Control Shaman with every AoE under the sun against 4-drop Paladin because his McGurgle Primes got him Rush. But thankfully, oh, I'm, I I didn't realize in the moment, but when I watch this back, I am so happy I had that Taunt Totem because he always kills the 2-2 there. And now I can full trade and put Taunts in the way, and oh my gosh, I would have been so tilted if I lost this game. I have no business losing this game. I have two Volcanoes, two Hag of the Schemes, two Earthquakes, an Earth Revenant, double three mana health taunt, double curve toot defender. I should never lose! And he went one to two to three into Cult of Arms, into Cult of Arms, into Rally, into Rally, into like a dead turn, into McGurgle Prime, a couple dead turns McGurgle Prime. It's like, oh my goodness. Thankfully though, we managed to stabilize here. The uh, Toxin Battle Cry is lit. Like, another benefit of having a third Murloc. Absolutely absurd. Traded down as much power as I could. Um, and we're starting to look pretty here. He'll have one more board. You know, because he's got half a board here. He'll play uh, two minions and a hero power and have a last board of the game. But thankfully for me, I have two more AoEs in my hand. As well as two pretty good minions. I'm not sure what I did here. I think I played the two minions that cost four and six mana. Yeah. I mean, this is just really good. It lets me clear almost everything in play. Double dip on the 6-4. And he concedes. That game was crazy. I had no business losing it, and also no business winning it at the same time, because of how good his draws were. But thankfully, I was able to pull it out. Magni versus Uther. All right, Warrior versus Paladin. It's his deck three, four through seven cost spells, and it is my deck four, seven through 10 cost spells. Here I do a little cheeky, I keep the cannon in the mulligan, and I play it on two because he has absolutely no way to kill it ever. The only way he can ever kill my cannon is if on turn one he coins out a knife juggler. That's the only way he can ever kill this cannon. So I play it, I get a Lucky Brigand top deck, it's very nice. Here I make a slight misplay. I greeted the draw first for an Azos first mate, but technically this card could draw patches and that would be a disaster. Thankfully it does not draw patches. Um, what isn't fortunate is that my cannon shots keep going face, and I really need them to hit this 4-2. So that he can't just kill it for free and then play... Ah! I could have cleared that thing, and instead three of my four shots went face. Thankfully for me, though, his turn was bad, and I'm able to full clear them before they can refresh off of the cult arms. And the cannon draw is absolutely disgusting. This trade kind of felt bad, but also it protects 9 damage, and specifically protects the captain. And everybody knows, if you're a good sailor, you protect the captain. Uh, I, I also kind of need a captain to live, because if this board doesn't give me the win, I just lose. Oh my gosh, what a top deck. Ooh, baby! I got two sevens in my hand, and you're telling me I top deck a 4 cost card? Are you kidding me? Oh, that's so juicy. You know what's even juicier? Is that I have... Five inputs of three damage, which is exactly 15. And what's even juicier is I spent 400 of my dust on Crush for this deck, 
because it was the only good 7 mana spell in all of Warrior, but it's never been played since it came out in GVG, and I got lethal with it. Let's go! Best 400 dust I ever spent! I gotta win against Martian because I spent that 400 dust on Crush! Crush stinks! But it got me the dump, baby. Let's go! Rexa versus Uther. All right, game five. I started out 0-2, and I have made it 2-2. It is the playoffs, so losing 2-3 and losing 0-3 is the same thing, but at least I've made it respectable. Got my deck two here. We're back with the Beast Hunter against Martian Booze, four through seven, called the Arms Paladin. Got the wonderful one drop. It's not an alley cat, which as we learned is much better to have early because you want to buff the Wobble Tingers. But I did have a one drop on one, so I can't complain. Here, draw a hyena. And I'm like, well, we saw last game, if you don't play cards, your hand gets kind of full. So I play and I trade a 1-1. One -one, and I almost trade two 1-1s. One -ones, but then I realized, wait a minute, he has no way to kill his 4-3. Much like how he can't kill a cannon, he can't kill his 4-3. So I send this one damage face. I probably was supposed to send both of them face, if I'm honest. Because he couldn't even kill a 2-2. He has no way to add one damage to his board. Uh, so I now have a 6-4. Which conveniently works great with these two Unleash the Hounds. So I get to deal 10 damage to Martian's face on turn 3. Which is absurd. And what's even more absurd is he doesn't draw another taunt. I don't think he even has that many. I think he has just the Righteouses that are taunts. I could be wrong. So now I'm doing the math like, did I just Hyena scan this man? I can hit him for another 10. If I set him to 9 and I kill command his face, he goes to 4. Much like how I know he couldn't kill my Hyena and my Cannon, I know he has no healing. It is impossible for him to heal. So I just rip the kill command to his face, and I know that all I have to do is hero power on 5, hero power on 6. He cannot win from here. I am like, I'm partying, dude. I started out 0-2, and I just Hyena scammed him in game 5. I killed him on essentially turn 2 with a Hyena. That's so absurd. Here I have a chance for high Alitha with Huffer. I don't need it. I hear a power. Martian understands what's going on. He can't heal. It's not possible. <laughs> oh no! The reverse sweep, baby! Let's go! Let's go, baby! <laughs> I'm... Hyena scam, baby! Let's go! Oh my gosh, I can't believe it. I can't believe the reverse sweep, baby. Let's go. I'm going to the quarterfinals, baby. The final four. Let's go. <laughs> GG's to Martian Boo. A class act, a class player, a class man. Just stall around a great guy. Man, what a crazy, crazy set of games there. I thought I was out. I thought I was done and out. I like I had this like favorable matchup game one. I was like, yeah, I can win here. We can do well. Nope. Game two. I got Control Shaman into his like kind of slow aggro deck, but it's okay because it's not as much late game as my double Nazoth Control Shaman. So I'll be fine. He steamrolls me. I'm like, oh man, this is this isn't good. And then, whew, much like last week, we pant, we punish the players' decks that have no way to interact with the board. They have no rush or hand buffs or board buffs, so they can't spit stats out that don't just sit there all slow. Oh, we reverse sweep the Paladin. That's crazy. That all happened so fast, I can hardly digest it. I'm so... Let's go! Let's go! And hey, if you liked that video, you should listen to Bob. Do what he says. He's a smart man. You can click here to subscribe, and you can click here to watch more videos. Peace.